Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. Boy, am I excited to introduce you to our guest. Before I do that, here's a quote I picked just for this episode. The higher we soar, the smaller we appear to those who cannot fly. Friedrich Nietzsche, my good friend, yours, if you're listening to this show and you like this show, you've heard this individual or you've heard them out in the world making things happen. The one and only Lance Bachman, actually episode 147 on the Culture Matters podcast. He's returning. If you haven't listened to that episode, get your butt over there and listen to that episode. Um, you got to rip it. LFG, founder of One SEO, um, father of beautiful children that I've had the honor of meeting, good friend of the Culture Matters podcast. What can I say about Lance? He uh, he works harder than I want to say anybody I know, just about anybody I know. Top five of all the people I know, and I know a lot of people, but he's also a good person, good friend, and cares about the people that he serves his clients, cares about his employees. And uh, that's why he's on the Culture Matters podcast. Thanks for coming coming back, my friend. Well, thank you for having me, Jay. It's always a pleasure talking to you, my friend. And I enjoy my time with you. I consider you my friend also. So I hope to see you back here in Philly soon. Heck yeah. Oh, and found, I should have done you justice here. Founder of LB Capital. We're going to unpack that because uh, I want to learn more about how that. And potentially there are audience listeners that may be very interested in what you have going on and how they can get close to you and learn and grow and do business with you. So for those that are not aware, what is your current um, endeavor mission? What do you, what problem could, are you solving now? Cause on your, our last show, I actually took this note. You said, I really like this. Um, uh, as a leader, you're nothing more than a solution person. So what solutions are you providing? As a right? leader, you're nothing more than a solution finder, right? So the reason why yeah. people are leaders, they're great at finding solutions for problems, right? Everybody wants to come and say there's problems. Right now, we're solution finding on scaling Munns Roofing, right? And Rupert Roofing right now. And we're scaling Shock IT and we're scaling Dilling. But, you know, heavily I'm investing into a 30,000 square foot training center over here that we're building out right now. State-of-the-art technology, state-of-the-art classroom, trainers. We actually have training going on over there right now. Saturday. Oh, that's now. awesome. Hi. So that's a training going on there right now. So, you know, we're, we're, we're finding solutions for scaling our organizations, making it a great place to work, have great people, and a place where people can have be proud to work and raise their families. And, you know, I think it's a balancing act that you want to have time with your family because you're going to be here before. You know, someone asked me a question the other day. If you had two people that you could ever have dinner with, right, dead or alive, who would it be? I said Tom Brady would be number one because I want to know what makes him tick. Number two, I would ask Steve Jobs, you know, obviously the founder of Apple, you know, do you regret working so hard not being with your family when you die? When you were dying on that deathbed and your daughter was or was not there, I don't know. But did you look back and think, man, I missed this. I missed this. And that's why I'll be out of here in about 40 minutes going to pick my kids up and spend time with them. Wow. How, how, for those that are listening that aren't sure how to succeed at the level that you are succeeding at and balance with family, what are some advice that you'd have for them on how to make it all work? Listen, fake it till you make it. <laughs> that's part of it, right? Like. <laughs> Well, no, people want to sit there and say, like, oh, Lance, you find the recipe. It's not the same stress as everyone else. You know, yesterday I was so freaking tired, Jay, so tired. Mm. I, I went to a holiday party on Saturday night. My wife took my kids to football training. I coached all day Saturday. No excuses. Sunday I had to coach for three hours, the kids in the wrestling room. And I'm laying there. My son's like, come play baseball, dad. Come play baseball, dad. And – I think about the one quote that someone told me, never say no to your children when they want to play sports because you don't know it will be the last time they ask you. And like, so like, wow, you know, so for me, every time my kids ask me to do something, I can't see us all the time, but I try to, whether it be play or this or that. Um, so I try to be present, more present now than ever. Mm. Uh, but I get up early in the morning, as you know, um, you know, I'll take a nap during the day. Um, I truly believe you can get a lot of work done if you, there's a difference between being busy and productive and most people are busy. 
Um, I try and be productive. I know when I'm not being productive. Mm. So I feel very bad about myself. I don't like it. Um, so I'm more of a productive guy than I'm a busy guy. I don't go out to lunch with anyone. Um, as you know, I don't go out to dinners unless I'm traveling. Um, you know, I have a very different, I don't do boys trips and not that there's anything wrong with these things. When my kids are older and, you know, my son Davey's 16, 15, he probably doesn't want to be around me no more. I'll probably go back to living that life. But right now I have to live this life to have a different life during the day and make things work. So I know I kind of went over the page there, but I try to do the best I can. I don't have all the answers. I know I can be a better father and a better husband and a better leader. I work on them every day. This 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 productive, right, versus uh, unproductive. What are some uh, elements of productivity? Is it you reaching out to people? You like, is it setting up meetings? Is it because you're yeah, running? Yeah. I try to, here's a whole to do list. Yeah, this is great. Check, check, check right here. It's always inside of a foot of me. Bang, bang, bang. To do list. Did you always have to do lists? Always. I have Google Sheets with to do's on. Like, it's constantly what do I have to do? What do we have to achieve? Not busy shit. What do we have to achieve? What do we have to get done? I think there's a big difference. <laughs> what what how would you start to define uh, busy stuff? Uh, busy uh, people get lost up in like something being at a hundred percent, right? Something at sixty percent and you actually doing it is better than you waiting to try and get something to a hundred percent. And people are like, well, it's not done yet. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Just we're moving forward. And I drive people, right? Like, I want to know is it possible? Can it get done? Shoot an email off, jump on a conference call. I'm not waiting. Listen, I'm a demanding person. I'm not going to lie. I'm a very demanding person. I want to win. Winning is the only thing that matters. Um, what's it? How do? How can a listener that's present with us right now recognize maybe they don't have what it takes to be an entrepreneur? You know. You know. You, 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 they, they know already. Listen, the worst person you can lie to is yourself. Like the man in the mirror. Listen, I know I got a gut right now. I get back to the gym. I got to put the spice wafer cookies down, chips deluxe cookies down. Like I know I'm only lying to myself to think I looked as good as I did six months ago. I put weight on. I can take it back off, right? Same thing with business. You know, are you going to do whatever it takes to win? You know if you're going to get up and drive. You know if you're going to get up and, and take it to the max every day. You know. The only person you're lying to is yourself. Mm. How do you mentor people? I don't. You mentor a lot of people. People ask me. Well, I, I let people come into my universe and observe and watch and spend a day. But I'll give you any materials you need. I mean, I'll help in any way I can because I'm blessed, right? I feel so grateful. I have such an abundance of great, great bliss. I'm happy, right? So I want, I want to return that. I always said if I made it, I never thought I would when I was younger, right? I, I really never thought I no. would. So I always said if I made it, I'm going to share it because so many people don't share it. And it's really so fucking simple once you're in the room. It's really so simple. But most people don't understand until you get into the room. And then I want to share it with everyone now. What's Shock IT support? Shock IT? Shock IT, we do all managed services. We do all managed services. We do all data secure. We have about 100. Uh, Chris right here, uh, actually. Bring him in. Shock IT. Bring Chris in. This Chris is the Culture Matters podcast. Bring the culture in here. Cat five and Cat six division. Chris is one of our hey, Chris. leaders over there. So yep. for some of our clients, like who, Chris? Amazon, who else? Amazon, Target. Um, we do pretty much a lot of pharmaceuticals, Rocket Farm up in Cranberry, a lot of big places. We're going to come out. We're going to do all your Cat five, Cat six, security alarm systems, fire alarm systems, cameras. Mm -hmm. With your uh, managed services, make sure all your data is backed up and secure. Make sure all your computers are operational and running. We have probably about 100 plus now employees over on the shock side. Sure. Where was the inspiration behind this? What do you mean? The inspiration behind Shock oh, IT. The inspiration, my partner Scott found it. There was two employees. This is Chris. So there was two employees at the time, me and Scott partnered um, probably seven years ago. And I said to Scott, listen, you're one of the smartest guys I know. You've been in business for 20 years and you only got two people. There's no reason that you're not spreading your knowledge everywhere wow. and become a multimillionaire. And we did it. We built it. That's how hey, it started. What's something you've learned from working with Lance and, and, and Scott? 
Oh, that's really? a I mean, question. That's, that is a very loaded question. Um, when I first started here, I really actually didn't know too much. I knew basis of construction and stuff. But what Scott and Lance have really taught me is a lot of uh, client um, interfacing with clients and things like that, being able to sell projects and being able to um, really execute those projects. So that way there's really no callbacks and making sure we're, you know, every job's in the best shape it can be from the moment we get on site from the moment we leave the site. Wow. How long you been with them? I've been here. It's going on my uh, fifth year, I believe. Wow. Uh, Chris is happy. Thank you. My very man. happy. Nice yeah, to meet thanks you. for coming on the show. Can you, me, can you grab me the cord for this thing? Right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right that's there, the yeah. culture right there. Um, you know, Lance, there are people that have been, uh, there's been a common common dialogue on the show the last um, handful of months. This will be 130, uh, 33 recordings since july 2nd and there's some cynicism some some uncertainty some some uncertainty in the, in the markets what's your advice to those that are fuck the market keep doing what you're going to do build what you want to build and don't buy into the rhetoric i don't even listen to it you didn't even hear me entertain it listen someone's out there buying what you're trying to sell someone's out there buying a window today a door today someone's out there buying training. Someone's out there buying sneakers today. Someone's out there buying shirts. Are you in front of that person selling them your service and product or not? It's that simple. You keep telling yourself the story that you want to tell your story to make yourself feel good about when you fail. That's not an option for me. Mm. What, 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 I remember watching a video of you talking about how you were like, I guess you lost a bunch of clients and it was like that realization or that that it was one of the best things that ever happened for the business. This was back years ago, the one SEO. During, COVID, we- during COVID, I lost, I literally lost during COVID 50% of my business. Me and my sister lost 50% of our business in that first week. Uh, my wife was crying, saying, are we going to make it? I had to walk outside. I walked out my backyard. I just started fucking laughing. Are we going to fucking make it? Like, what? Like, after everything I've been through, walked everybody in, pulled them together, said, it's over, guys. This mindset's done. I spun a podcast up. We started getting things going. And my podcast comes back in January. Um, you know, and it's that simple. Like, it ain't that hard to figure out what to do. You just got to be willing to do it and put the hours. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I was working from 5 in the morning to 10, 11 every single night. Besides coaching my children during COVID, I literally work every single night. And so did my team around me. Yeah, like when – okay, so let's unpack real quick this 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 gathering. You You got your people together and you told them the truth. You told them the vision. How did you articulate it? The truth. People know. People know. Like, people know. People see what's happening. People talk. What do you think? Like, you're not going to pee down my leg and tell me it's raining. I mean, when it's an elephant standing in the room, nobody wants to address it. Why not? So you do it. It's the only way to do it. People see. <laughs> Listen. You can live in uncertainty and let people kind of just shake and bake out there and figure it out. Well, you just be honest with them, tell them what's going on, say, listen, we're going to be okay. We're going to go do this. Do you think, and I say this all the time, George Washington, do you know when he crossed the Delaware that night? Do you know how many battles he won and lost prior to that? Do you know what his record was? I don't. It's, it's Google it right now. You're going to see it was six and six, they'll say. It was either seven and six or six and six, right? So he's 500, this guy in battles. I'm sure on Christmas Eve, when he decided to pack up across a frozen river and he Mm -hmm. had to tell people, some of you ain't going to cross it. We're going to die. Or we're not all going to get there. I'm sure that some people didn't want to do it. But his belief and his directness was so strong. Those that followed, followed him. And eventually wind up winning the war because of that battle. They said that was the battle that was the turning point. Right? So... My thing is about winning battles and just keeping going. You're going to lose some, you're going to win some. And, you know, I always use that George Washington example. I just tell people, Google it. You know, historians will tell you he was about 500 at the time of that. Wow. And what's the podcast called that you had? Was that the Lions Den? Yeah. In the Den. Lions Den. Where can That's people... not coming back. A different one's coming back. What's the new one? Do we have a name yet? It does. It does, baby. It's coming out. What where what, what's it called? Because it, when this comes out, people are going to be able to listen to it. It's going to be let's fucking grow, baby. Let's so grow. LFG, LF grow. grow. Grow your business. Grow everything you're doing. Growing everything. 
And now is that you bringing guests on? Or, all and guests or, all. I'm sorry? All guests. All guests. And, yes, from business. It's going to be trying around business, business, going around business, going around your health, going around your mental health. There's so many things that go into being a good entrepreneur. Most people don't get that. Being organized, understanding systems and processes. I'm going to bring it from a different thing, not just going to the gym and being, oh, blah, blah, blah. no, it's there's so much more to it. Are you, and are you going to be the host? Yeah, maybe the host is with the most is. Why not? Um, what, what have you done to prepare? Me? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. We're building it out. And when do you, it launches when? Well, I'll start recording in January, February. It won't launch to probably Q2 of next year. Well, I'm volunteering you whenever you want to record. Oh, I mean, you might be my number one, my number uno. Yeah, we could do it right after this. <laughs> or tonight. I'm not going to sleep. Yeah, like, okay. So I want your feedback, you know. Um, what do you think I could be doing better to succeed in this, in this, in this time? You know me so well. Uh, we spent so much time together. You've seen that we have this podcast. The show has grown. I think your podcast is good. I like everything about you. I think people could always work on things better, but I don't think people should be giving people, I don't use the word, I hate the word feedback. I think those feedback moments should be in private, right? You know, there, there's moments, there, there's micro moments, there's important moments of truth should be in private. What, what, where does that philosophy come from? That could be helpful to our audience. I think some people can misconstrue positive feedback as negative. I think some people can misconstrue. So I think when you're just having a feedback conversation, you're better off in private or small settings. 2024. What's what's that look like for us? I'm going to keep for us or for... Well, for our audience and for you guys, yeah. <clears throat> I think for your audience, I think you're going to see some troubling times. Uh, it's an election year. Politicians notoriously are not good people. Um, I think they have their own agendas. I think people buy into that. I'd say tell you not to. I think 24 is going to be a tough year out there in the marketplace for a lot of different businesses. Mm -hmm. I think the strong will survive, the weak will die. Um, I mean, it's almost like it had to, right? Because COVID was so good to everybody. Um, as far as our companies, we're going to continue to do the right thing, have great service, give a great product, and have all of our companies grow and be profitable. Right. And reinvest back into our company and our people. If, if if any of our listeners are interested in potentially becoming a partner of you, that means that you would actually in, invest with them, guide them, lead them. You know, what are you looking for? So, like, yeah, we, people. I don't I think people have a misconception. I don't buy companies. I partner with companies. There's a big difference. You know, when I partner with a company, <clears throat> I put money into the operating account to see that company grow. My partner does not leave with a check. Like, you're not going to check for me. Like I call it the Jamar Russell uh, system uh, thing when, you know, he got that big check and he just didn't perform. So I don't do that. I'm looking for an operator that wants to stay on board, that has struggled, that understands that they have some challenges. And we're going to go in, we're going to immediately fix their advertising, their systems, their processes, their leadership, their sales, and make you a sales company first, a technology company second, the widget is third. And, you know, truthfully, I'm looking for good people. You know, I don't have a certain vertical, even though people think I'm all about roofing. I love roofing. I think it's a great vertical. Um, I'm open. We're in the HVAC space now. We're in the IT space now. Uh, we're in the consultant bit space for Titan Pro Technologies. Um, you know, so it's really the widget, but I'm looking for the operator. I'm looking for the person. Are you a good person? Can I deal with you? Are you going to be coachable? Um, do you want to grow? Are you hungry? You know, when someone texted me one time or two times for a meeting and that's it, you're not hungry. You're not hungry. You know, wow. you're gonna, you know, you, if you ain't chasing me down, what makes me think you're going to chase down salespeople to join an organization, j jump in to get HR people in our organization, jump down sales, get people to sign. So I always look at people's actions. If you don't chase me down, why would you chase anyone else down? Wow, that's deep. Sales technology widget. Why that order? Because you have to get, well, give me what you think the most important role in any company is. Just give me, just give me, a, just name the title, what you think a position would be that you would identify as important. Founder, CEO. CEO. Yeah. Without sales, how do you have a CEO? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, they're the salesperson. That's what they are. Yeah. 
I know, but it, like, I'm not a, no longer a salesperson. I sell now visions and but I yeah. never sold, I don't sell HVAC. I never sold shock IT's products. I never, so, you know, I always say this, your most important asset in any organization is your salespeople. You need great salespeople. You need people that can communicate well, articulate well, share your vision, belief, and sell your product to customers. And if you don't have that, you don't have a great CEO. You don't have a great chief operating officer. You don't have a great account mm -hmm. department. You don't have a great pr production team. You literally are one person sitting in the room by yourself selling it. Mm. And what 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 about technology? Technology, if you aren't on a great platform, if you aren't on having something that can help you scale without all this manual labor, eventually you're going to crash. Mm. And, and the widgets last. I don't believe there's a difference. Somebody asked me this the other day. Is there a difference between a technology company and a home-based service company? I said, absolutely not. There's no difference. It's the widget. I've been in both. In closing, uh, someone listening to this, you know, they're not, they're, they're not qualified to be a partner with you. What are the three attributes that they represent? Like, or that makes up their character? Three things. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and act like I'm better than anyone else and say that. Somebody would not want to be partners with me. Somebody would say, Lance, I got three attributes about you I don't like. So I'm not going to answer that question. I just think I got my core values. I believe in me. I believe in my vision. I believe in the people around me that carry it out. People like Bill Rizal, Joe Lynn, Mike Shelley, other people that have same core values and the vision and beliefs I have. If you don't align with me, I'm not going to say you're wrong and I'm right. We just don't align. It's kind of like dating a girl, right? You just don't see eye to eye. You don't want to be with her. She's not wrong. You're not wrong. Don't be with someone that's going to make you happy. I'm going to go do what makes me happy. What are some of your values then? Yeah, I like that. My family's first. I believe if you're not a good father, you're probably not going to be a good someone in my organization. I'm not saying father meaning you got to be at every kid's game, but you got to be at the bulk of the kids' games. If you're not a good father, that you don't love your children and you don't want to be, see, my, my kids are everything, right? So my family comes first. You know, people will say to me, oh man, what about like a husband? My job is not to regulate you on being a husband. You might have a shitty wife at home. I don't know what goes on there. But I know one thing, your children never did anything to you, right? So I'm not here to judge that. Um, I do think being a good husband or wife, you know, to the best of your ability, right? People, people have limitations. People don't understand that. Not everyone gives the same way, you know? When I first met my wife and my wife was like, man, I'm really not in the children. Like children's not my thing. I was like, oh my God, like this woman's crazy. Like, like but I see my wife with my children and her children are her everything. It's her mm. children, not all these other children. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's context, right? Mm. Um, the other core value is you get, you can't always be first in things. You got to be a giver. Most people are takers. If people are just takers, you're probably not going to do well with this. Mm. What makes that so important in your view? You can't constantly take. If you, can't, if you take enough jelly beans out of the fucking jar, there's no jelly beans left. Right? You got to give back. You got to constantly give back. I think most people that give back feel good about themselves, and that's how things grow. Are you going to be uh, going on more podcasts in, in the future? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I probably do right now. Two, three a week, people ask me, come on, I can't make them all, but I try to do the best I can. What do you think about podcasting in general? Um, Definitely do it. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Listen, yeah. not everyone's going to have the number one podcast in the world, but know what? Creating content, building your brand, getting people to know you, there's nothing wrong with it. Mm. Yeah, you think you'd be where you are today without the brand? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. People know when they, people that know Lance Bachman, they know what the brand stands for. People that don't. That's true. Does it, but either way, the brand, I truly believe the Lance Bachman brand is a strong brand of doing the right thing. No matter, even if you aren't a fan of me and my personality, say, I think you still say, man, this guy does business the right way. He gives a five star place to all of his businesses. He takes care of his employees. He takes care of his customers. I don't think anyone would this, I don't think anyone would argue that part. I think the mm -hmm. brain is that strong that way. Whether you like me or not, I frankly don't give a shit. Let's uh, say you have dinner because you're going to meet, you're going to have dinner with Tom. I believe that. With who? Well, Mr. Brady. I, I see that happening. What do you, uh, what do you, what do you, well, maybe not what you'll ask him because that's a private conversation. 
Uh, but what what's so inspiring about Tom Brady to you as a well, business owner? Well, you got to look at Tom. He, he he wasn't like the number one draft choice. He wasn't this big high school and college. He, he fought adversity in college where they tried replacing him with a true freshman, right? And he'd come back in and bail the freshman out, right? And he never complained. He was just a leader, right? Then finally he gets drafted in the last round, one of the last picks out there, and he just fought adversity the whole time. And even on his rise to success with people hating on him, taking jabs at him, he was always a class act, in my opinion. People are like, well, he got two women pregnant. I'm like, get over it. Like, live in the there were willing participants. Come on. <laughs> live in the real world here, right? I mean, really, what has he done? And then, you know, look at the mental fortitude he's had to do to make people better around him all the time, not just in the game of football, but mentally better off the field too. So I don't know. I just think I have a lot of respect for him from what I see from, a, from an outside point. I don't want to have that conversation with him. I'm challenging our listeners to make that meeting happen. So anyone listening to this, you know, someone that knows someone that knows Tom, make that happen for Lance Lance. Thanks for coming on another episode of the culture matters podcast. Final word, you know, Final word. What what what's our takeaway here? Have fun building what you're building, and don't worry about what anyone's saying about you. Just keep your head focused and keep going. He ain't building the